Hey guys, happy Monday. I hope everybody is doing really well out there these days. Uh, since I started doing these uh, Docker tutorials with Open Media Vault and with uh, Raspberry Pis and that sort of thing, I've had several people ask me what kind of hardware I use for my server. So uh, I thought we would just kind of take a tour around my desk, uh, kind of off to the side of my desk, and uh, just kind of take a look at the hardware that I use day to day uh, to uh, not only make these videos, uh, both from the the, the, the the demonstration server that I have set up actually on, uh, on this little guy right here, this Latte Panda, uh, but we'll also take a look at my uh, my actual desktop system, what I use for my day-to-day -day stuff, uh, what I use to do social media and edit videos and all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that real briefly. And then we'll also talk about the actual home server that I use, uh, that I've been using for the past uh, year or so, and uh, that sort of thing. So uh, with all that being said, uh, I would say right now is a good time to grab your favorite coffee cup and just hang out for a few minutes. Okay guys, before we switch camera angles, I wanna just kinda of interrupt for a second and give a shout out to the folks over at Sticky Ricky. Uh, they are kind of a Lego company. They make little cool uh, coffee cups like this. Uh, so if you're interested in getting a coffee cup like this that you can stick Legos to, or if you're interested in getting some uh, Sticky Bricky tape uh, that I should really show you here. Um, if you're interested in getting all that, any of that kind of stuff, check out the link in the description down below. Use offer code or, or discount code DB Tech and get 10% off your order. Uh, with that being said though, let's jump over and take a look at uh, my day-to-day -day hardware. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, uh, you'll probably be familiar with this right here, um, though you may not realize it. This is a Latte Panda. And uh, if you, again, if you've seen uh, any of my videos for the past six months or so, uh, you'll know that uh, I spent a lot of time on a device that I've called Panda. And that's this guy right here. This is, uh, like I said, a Latte Panda Delta. And uh, it is uh, kind of a cool little device because it's got an Intel N41 four core processor in it, uh, similar to what you might find in a Chromebook or even a, a low powered netbook. Uh, so this, uh, this will support Windows, Linux, uh, basically any kind of x86 uh, operating system uh, or x64, uh, you can put either one. So basically any kind of a desktop operating system will work on this device. And uh, this one has got four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of onboard storage. Um, but if we flip it over here to the side, uh, hopefully that's pretty much in focus. Right here, you can see that we can add a micro SD card. There's also a couple of slots over here uh, for some rib ribbon cable attachments for touch. And uh, I think a uh, display port uh, in ribbon cable form there. That's what uh, these over here are for. There's a little indicator light over here as well. Uh, if we look over on this side, uh, we can see that it's got a USB-C uh, for power. It's got an audio jack here. Uh, it's got a, a one gig uh, network, uh, you know, uh, RJ45, and a full size HDMI port that I really, really appreciate. Um, there are a lot of different, or a few different sizes of these uh, HDMI ports out there, and I'm really glad that they went with the full size on this. Uh, you know, they could have done something like on a Raspberry Pi, uh, where they've done like the micro, uh, like you can kind of see me pointing out here, uh, but they went for the full size and I really do appreciate that. Uh, over here on the other side, uh, we've got a power button and oh, and on the final side, we've got uh, three uh, USB, uh, three plugs that are full size as well. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I've been doing most of the tutorials on this channel on uh, over the course of the you know, last five or six months or so. Um, there's actually one other kind of cool thing about this. If I pop off these edges here, oops, there we go. Um, it's also got an Arduino coprocessor uh, with pinouts on it. So you can actually use this uh, also as an Arduino. It's, and, and again, it supports Windows 10. Uh, lots of very cool functionality on this little device. It'll run you a couple hundred bucks though, depending on which model you get. Uh, I believe the Alpha is, is quite a bit more expensive, uh, but it's also got some more uh, features and functionality to it that this one doesn't. But this is uh, what I've been using uh, to test different uh, Docker containers on that sort of thing. Uh, 
uh, so that I can kind of test it in, in uh, a test environment before I push it to my production server, my actual main home server that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but this is the device that you're probably most familiar with on my channel. Um, and so I thought I would just take a minute and kind of introduce you to it, show you uh, what it is, what it has, uh, that sort of thing. I'll have, also have links in the description where you can pick one of these up. Uh, this one was actually provided to me by DF Robot uh, last year, and I, and I really do appreciate that. Uh, most of the content on my channel over the past several months has been a direct response to their uh, them sending me this. Uh, without that, I wouldn't have this, and my videos would be quite a bit different, I think. Um, so yeah, this is what I've been using for the past several months. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that aside and talk about what I've been using a bit more recently. And of course, that is a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, this is the four gig model uh, that uh, the folks over at Canakit sent me. Uh, so this has got the uh, quad core uh, ARM 64 bit processor in it. Uh, again, uh, four gigs of RAM. Uh, you can put whatever size SD card or micro SD card you want in here. Uh, it's got the uh, USB-C for power, uh, a couple of uh, micro HDMI ports. Again, I understand why they did this on a small device like this, but I really do prefer the full size HDMI. There's also the AV port here. Uh, so you can plug in uh, the three and a half millimeter that then expands out into um, your uh, red, yellow, and white cables. Of course, on the other side here, we've got a couple of USB 2, a couple of USB 3, also a one gig port on here. Uh, you know, the Raspberry 3 uh, had a, a 10100. This has got a 10100 1000, or, you know, just a standard gigabit port there. Uh, not much else really going on here. Um, but I can say a big, I want to give a big shout out to Canakit for sending this over to me. I uh, can just take a quick look inside here. Uh, you can see that I've got the, uh, the, the heat, sh heat sinks on here. I've also got a fan attached uh, to uh, the GPIO pins up here so that that's constantly running and keeping things cool there. But uh, I've been doing some of my content recently. Oops, let's spin that around the right way. I've been doing some of my content recently on the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, and I expect that there will be uh, more Raspberry Pi videos coming out, uh, especially because the folks over at Canakit are sending me the new eight gig model of this, and I should hopefully have that here in the next few days. So uh, we've of course talked about uh, the storage capabilities of, of both of these devices. Uh, the, the, the Latte Panda's got a 32 gig uh, eMMC e chip on it. Uh, that's just onboard storage. Uh, this is currently the Raspberry Pi I've got here currently has a 32 gig chip in it as well. And of course, both of those are gonna fill up pretty quickly uh, once you start putting Docker containers uh, and media, that sort of thing on there. <clears throat> uh, so of course, uh, I've got a couple of external drives. This is a Western Digital uh, Easy Store drive uh, that I picked up for about a hundred bucks, I think. Maybe this one was 50. There was a two terabyte that I picked up for a hundred bucks. I believe this one terabyte was 50 bucks. I could be wrong. I will have links to all of this in the description down below. So you can pick one of these up if you want. <clears throat> uh, just a very standard two and a half inch. Uh, I believe it's actually, I believe it's a spinning drive. Uh, so this isn't an SSD, uh, but it's running on USB three. And this is one of the drives that I use uh, for storing media when I'm doing uh, different tutorials and that sort of thing. Um, but then I've also got <clears throat> uh, this guy right here. Uh, this is an M.2 SSD that's in here. Uh, the, the, the actual drive inside was provided to me uh, last year as well by a company whose name actually escapes me at the moment. But then I picked up this outer aluminum shell to keep everything nice and uh, nice and stored there. And of course, this one also runs on USB 3. Um, but uh, those are the external drives that I use. Um, so that pretty much covers everything there. Um, but I want to cover just a couple of other real quick things before we start talking about uh, my main server. Okay, so here we are uh, over at my desk. Sorry, it's a little messy. Uh, I've always got a lot of stuff going on over here. Um, and so this is kind of the other part uh, of my desktop setup. I've got another Raspberry Pi here. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, uh, also with a 32 gig card in it that is way, way overkill for what I'm using this for. Uh, this is just acting as my home's uh, pie hole. Uh, one of them anyway, I've actually got two of them set up, but uh, yeah, so this is running just Pi hole. I could probably get away with an eight gig card, but I didn't have one. So 32 gig card it is. 
And then uh, below that, uh, all of my desktop stuff gets plugged into this. Uh, that's a Netgear GS208. Uh, let's see if I can actually get a better focus on that. There we go. Uh, so yeah, uh, Netgear GS208, uh, eight gig or eight port, one gig switch. Uh, again, everything on my desktop gets plugged into that. Uh, and then I've just got a power little power distribution block over there. Um, that's got USB and uh, 120 on there as well. Uh, and that pretty much wraps up everything uh, on my desk as far as uh, what I do for most of my day-to-day -day videos, that sort of thing. Everything goes through uh, the devices that I've shown you up to this point. All right, guys, so uh, now I'm sitting on the floor uh, just over here to the right of my computer. Uh, if I actually spin the, the camera around here, uh, here is my desk, uh, focus. Come on, there we go. So uh, there is uh, my desk. This is where I was just sitting, recording everything that we were just talking about. Uh, but then if we come over here to the right, uh, this is uh, my very dusty uh, main desktop PC here. Uh, this is kind of what I shoot, what I edit all my videos on, uh, all my day-to-day -day tasks and everything happen on here. Uh, this has got an AMD uh, 2600 uh, processor in it, uh, right there, of course. Uh, the GeForce GT or RTX 2070. Uh, I've got uh, an Elgato uh, HD 60 capture card down there uh, with uh, an AX 1200 power supply that's way overkill. I've had it for years, it keeps working, so I don't really see any point in changing it out. <clears throat> uh, but that pretty much wraps up uh, everything in here. Very basic system, but does really everything I need it to do. Okay. So this is uh, my home server. Uh, it runs RGB like this all of the time, uh, just because it can and it amuses people when they come over. Uh, this actually sits in my living room like this. Uh, if we come over to the front, uh, lots of RGB on the front there as well. Uh, so people enjoy that. So I leave it up there, uh, mostly for the enjoyment and entertainment of other people. Um, but uh, kind of a bare bones system, kind of outdated at this point. Uh, it's got a uh, an AMD FX8350, uh, four core, eight thread. They say it's an eight core processor. Uh, I think it's really a four core with eight threads. Uh, below that, we've got uh, a GeForce GTX 770 with two gigs of uh, video RAM on there. Uh, but up there, uh, up here, we've got some Corsair Vengeance uh, DDR3 with 16 gigs, those are four gig sticks each, uh, running at I think 1333 or whatever the base is, uh, no XMP profile or anything on those. Uh, it is water cooled uh, to some degree, at least on the CPU, uh, and of course air cooled uh, with the uh, blower style on uh, the uh, on the video card. Um, and this is a 750, it's a CX 750M uh, from Corsair, I believe as well. Um, and then uh, down here, uh, I've just got a couple of drives thrown in there. I've got a, a 120 gig uh, SSD for the operating system and a, uh, ooh, that's dusty, holy cow. Uh, and then uh, just a six terabyte uh, hard drive in there for data, that sort of thing. Uh, but that pretty much wraps up my server. Just kind of wanted to give you a, a quick glimpse uh, behind the scenes as far as what DB Tech uses on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay guys, I almost forgot to mention this. I have never done a video on this, but I wanted to give just a very brief, quick introduction to the Amber Pro from Latticeworks. Uh, they reached out to me a couple of months ago uh, to talk about some, doing some tutorial videos for them. And in the in the interim and all of the emails back and forth and the very cool uh, video meet, uh, meetings that we've had, uh, they sent me one of these. Again, this is the Amber Pro from Latticeworks. And I do have some content coming out uh, very soon about this little all-in-one home server device uh, so definitely get subscribed if you're interested in more uh, info about this okay guys there you go there is all of the different hardware uh, that I use not maybe not all of the different hardware. there is most of the different hardware that I use on a very very regular basis uh, you know between the, the latte panda and the Raspberry Pi 4 even the Raspberry Pi 3 um, and of course the home built uh, AMD FX home server that I've got up and running. Uh, that's basically everything I use on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for making videos, for surveying media across my home, that sort of thing. So <clears throat> I guess what my point to all of this is you don't need to go out and buy a rack. You don't need one U or two U or four U, uh, you know, 
rack servers, blade servers, whatever you want to call them. You don't need that. You can get by with something as simple as a Raspberry Pi 4 or, or, or a Latte Panda for a couple hundred bucks and be well on your way to serving all of your home server needs without breaking the bank, without taking up a ton of space. So I hope this helps. I hope this kind of gets people uh, kind of with their mind in the right position now, knowing that you really don't need a big, expensive, elaborate setup to serve your basic home server needs. Um, but with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, but I guess before I do that, I should get some obligatory stuff out of the way. Of course, if you want to support the channel, there are a few different ways you can do that. Uh, there is merch down below, uh, right below this video. You should be able to find some of that uh, in the description down below where you're going to find links to Sticky Bricky. You'll also find some links uh, to places like Coffee, where you can do like a one-time tip to support the channel. There's a link to Patreon where you can become a patron. Uh, there are a few different levels of membership that you can uh, sign up for there. Uh, the five and $10 levels will give you access to a, a patrons only discord server uh, where we can just kind of hang out and chat about whatever you'd like to chat about. Uh, but with all of that being said, now I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up for real. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.